Hello and welcome, I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modelling for Advantage. Today we're going to have a look at the new Flames of War Tank Hunter Camp Grouper. So let's have a quick cut here while I get this bad boy open. First up, we talk a little bit about the paperwork. You get one of these start here guides, little booklets, you're getting all of these. Gives you assembly instructions to build the vehicles as they are described in the army list that it provides. It's 96 points, so just, you know, do you for your standard 100 point game, give or take. And it is a legal list, I did a quick, quick check. Other bits of paper, you get the Flames of War rulebook, love the fact they include that. You get some decals, one is just a series of Balkan crosses and tank numbers and the other are division specific for uh, 17th Panzer, 116th Panzer and the Hermann Goering Panzer Division, the Paratrooper Panzer Regiment. Alright, we'll go through the unit cards as we look at the units and we'll start with the Tank Hunter Panzer IV L70 HQ. Panzer IV L70 is one of the much uh, Waited for vehicles in this set. It's got the long 7.5 centimeter, the L70, obviously, which has got a 40 inch range. Hollywood rate of fire of two, moving of one, 14 anti tank power, three firepower, and a forward firing roll. That is as powerful as an 88. That's got some serious anti tank power, about as good as you're going to get on a chassis that's got a front armor of nine and is careful, so isn't that easy to hit. The HQ consists of one or two of these for 9 or 18 points and the formation itself as well as the HQ is going to contain one or two platoons of the L70, um, one platoon which is either the L70 or Panthers or Tigers or Armoured Panzer Grenadiers and then the option of having a platoon of self-propelled AAA tanks. So the platoon itself then is three or four vehicles at 27 or 36. So these are nine points of vehicle in all cases, but solid anti-tank power. But what does it look like? Interesting, um, it's a very small kit, this. It's not, so they've not repurposed the Panzer IV uh, sprue that you had before or provided an upgrade. This is a new sprue, although obviously it shares those design features. It does have some different skirts, which might be interesting to mix and match on your other Panzer IV chassis. Um, it looks like it's got the same pieces. We've got two guns here. Presumably one is the L70. Maybe there was a 105mm howitzer version. 2020 sprue. Interesting. The thing about the Panzer IV L70, it's not a Stug IV. Somebody corrected me for that. I had a bit of a look into it. It's an odd vehicle. Uh, in terms of its name, because it isn't a tank, it clearly does not have a turret, it's a tank destroyer. And I wonder, I came across references to in the middling war period, as there weren't enough panzers for the panzer formations and the panzer grenadiers, and they started using tank destroyers and self propelled guns to replace those tanks in certain formations. But there was a bit of a battle went on between the Panzerwaffe uh, and the artillery because assault guns are in the artillery. And I wondered whether they decided with this gun, this particular vehicle although it is a tank destroyer self-propelled gun they were gonna call it a panzer so there was no argument about which arm of the service it went into I don't know I'm not sure that's pure speculation on my part you get five of these in the kit very nice so the next thing that's available um, within the formation is the Ausfind or the Verbalwind. This is your anti-aircraft tanks and the same sprue is going to build you one or the other Verbal Vins have got the four centimeter, the four two centimeter cannon, and the Osfin have got a single 3.7. Fundamentally, the Osfin slightly more armor, slightly better firepower, anti tank rating. The Verbal Vind much higher rate of fire. Three halted on the 37 millimeter, five on the 20 mil. Both are dedicated AA. Very nice. The sprue though is interesting because what they've done is they provided you with a mid war Panzer IV hull. If you've got desert Panzer IVs or um, Stalingrad era Panzer IVs, this is exactly the same sprue. It is the 2017 BM073 Panzer IV sprue. And then they provide you with this upgrade sprue to go with it. And what I like about this is this is going to allow you to repurpose existing Panzer IVs, I think, if you've got some from the mid-war period that you've not used, because it looks like you can entirely build both turrets of this vehicle. We've got an upper and lower turret piece, separate guns, separate gun carriages and mounts, 
right down to the fact that they've provided two turret pegs. Um, obviously, I've not had a chance to build one of these because we're trying to get this video out really soon. But I think I think that they have tried deliberately to let you do that. And if they have, really pleased with it. So you get a pair of those in there and a pair of the Panzer IV uh, chassis as well. Last new vehicle in here, the Hetzer. What a beauty. So the Hetzer is a late war very small tank destroyer which the Skoda works have repurposed the Panzer 38T hull which was quite powerful or quite useful in the mid-war for equipping a lot of the Panzer divisions particularly 1941 bound Barbarossa I think they've reused that hull to make this new weapon system the Hetzer then she's confident trained and careful and has got a front armor of seven so it's not amazing for late war but it's certainly very similar performance to Sherman's except it's it's got a 7.5 centimeter gun with a 32 inch range, halted rate of fire of two, moving one, and 11 anti-tank power. So she can still take out some quite powerful vehicles. She's obviously got some limitations. We've got the forward firing rule, but the stormtrooper rule, because it's a German vehicle, but we've also got overworked. What's interesting about this vehicle is it's very cramped inside. It's quite small. I don't think it's overworked because of the lack. Normally overworked means it's like a two-man turret on a tank or something. There's not enough crew positions. I don't think that's the case in this. I just think it is a very small chassis with a very big gun in it. Although it seems from the diaries that a lot of the troops liked that because this was quite small and quite nimble for its performance, it wasn't nearly so easy uh, to hit and so the troops obviously valued their survivability over their comfort. There's also other gun options on here and I think that this kit, as well as being able to build some Marda variants, and they have entirely different lower holes, you've only got one set of tracks so you're not going to get two vehicles out of this. Um, but I wonder whether you can also build a Panzer 38T out of this kit. It's quite possible. It's a Marder 3 2020. Another new kit. And these bad boys rock in three, four points a model. 12, uh, 12 points for three or 16 points for four. I think that they're really nice, especially um, if you just want to bring in a little bit of cheap anti-tank power. It's got some mobility. Very nice. Being overworked probably these vehicles are going to work best in a kind of defensive situation but they do have a high mobility they've got a tactical speed of 10 and a terrain dash of 12 they do cross on a five though so these are not vehicles to try and move into cover uh, last vehicle uh, in here is the SDKFZ251. It's a nice sprue. It's been around for a while and it does provide an interesting point of comparison. If you look at the 251, this is one of their older plastic kits. This one is 2013. And one of the key differences you'll see with the new one is not just the amount of space, but also the thickness of the sprue gates. This is still a perfectly serviceable kit, but it is it has very, very strong sprue gates, the bits that hold the pieces on compared to the newer ones. So of these new ones you can almost push some pieces out whereas this they're much more likely to break while you're doing it it's not a serious problem because uh, most of it's quite rugged and where they're not where they're more fragile pieces like machine guns they provide you with extra ones but it is worth noting there are slight differences you also by the looks of things looking at here you have the option to build the engineering variant because it's got the kind of bridging equipment on there uh, so yeah, nice one. You get four of these, which is going to allow you to put your Panzer Grenadiers in some mobility. Panzer Grenadier Platoon in here, Armoured Panzer Grenadier Platoon, and the 251 card. I'm not going to go through this because you've seen it all before, I'm sure. You can take Panzer Faust, Panzer Shreks, but it is worth looking at the guys. Because the guys that you're going to get in here in terms of infantry, you're getting two German infantry sprues, which have got 28, uh, 24 guys on each. If you have the bit hit the beach stuff, you'll recognise these guys are all the same. And these ones across the top are slightly different poses in some cases. So there's a little bit of variety in there. And you also get one of this Command Heavy sprue. Which is nice. It gives you a, it gives you a Panzer a Panzer Shrek on there and a couple of other Commander poses. But it's got this really cool looking, you know, that iconic uh, Nazi villain pose. He's got the frock coat and the you know, so Captain, we are not all barbarians. Kind of look about him um, for that iconic scene when the good guys get captured and talk to the bad guy. So there's. 
24-48-54. Although it says our platoon, you can actually get two platoons out of this, I'm quite sure. That you don't quite get enough bases for that. Uh, last few things to talk about. Oh, I should have mentioned while we were doing it, you do get vehicle crew sprues from the 251s. These are lovely little sprues. Not only have you got a guy firing the MG42 in a firing position, some kind of commander. We've also got four seated guys. Two of them are complete seated guys. And I quite like to stick these sort of sat on artillery crates or on the back of other vehicles just to put some flavor um, across otherwise quite identical looking models. Four of those sprues for the four uh, vehicles that you get. We got two of the uh, German commander sprues. You'll have seen these before. That's there's ten commanders here, which is enough to put a one in every vehicle. And then we move on to our artillery. So artillery-wise, we get the Flak 88, which we've had same sprue we've had quite a long time, identical to the Desert. They do make a Pack 43, one of these on a different mount, but this isn't it. This is the anti-aircraft battery. Um, you take this primarily in the midwater to get yourself some anti-tank power. It's worth noting um, that this is a really small company level game. The Flak 88 does not count as dedicated AA because this is more of a strategic anti-aircraft weapon rather than a this um, dive bomber is coming in right in front of me. These are uh, designed for shooting at uh, things 20,000 feet in the air or whatever. So it's actually not that useful as AA in the game compared to the AA tanks. Interesting. Uh, and you get crew sprue for those, one guy seated and one guy with the, uh, the telescopic uh, rangefinder. You can mix and match these with others, those telescopic rangefinders are not unique to it. But you might want to be mindful of which sprue you take your artillery crew from, because some of the shells are going to be quite different in size. This one is intended for the AT-8s, which is BM-123. Whereas this other artillery crew sprue, which is BM122, is more generic, and that is intended for the battery of four 105s or 10.5 centimeter howitzers, which is the last thing to talk about in here. Um, interesting little sprue this obviously what i like about this kit is not just that there's a lot of new stuff in here but the other stuff that you've got in there hasn't been duplicated endlessly it's not like you get three new vehicles and then a load of stuff you've had a hundred times over this kit has been around for a while this artillery but they don't tend to issue it with the starter sets um so i didn't actually have many of these already so this is a 2016 sprue. You do have two different cannon type uh, barrel types for different periods of the war. And you have the two different wheel types. One is for the mechanized formations and one is for the horse drawn formations. Nice little kit. Last thing in here, right near the end, is we do have one piece in the new thermoplastic. It's quite interesting, GBX 166A. These are the, the torsos and in some cases the kind of thighs of German I, crewmen. I assume these are intended to go in those open turrets on the self-propelled AA vehicles. They're interesting sculpts because they've got a lot more detail than you would expect. They've even got some quite interesting facial expressions are kind of posed to one side. Now I thought for a 15 mil miniature, the faces are quite interesting. In some cases they're a bit uh, strained, but there's only so much you can do. They do look different. The helmets are a little bit more square, the style helm, but the detail on them is really crisp. You know, I've had uh, really mixed uh, views on this thermoplastic that they've been using, but this particular sprue, really pleased with. I suspect that it's more of a quality control issue rather than the actual material, but we'll have to see. Really nice little inclusion, and I'd be tempted to use these uh, in other things as well as just those, any other open top vehicle. There are of course some bases in here, uh, and I probably forgot to mention something. But that's all, look at it. Look, the price has gone up. These are now 80 quid. They used to be 70. That's 110 in US dollars. And Lord knows how many millions of Australian dollars it is, but probably an unimaginable value. But I still think that it reflects good value. I counted 22 units in here. I think, you know, this is an army in a box. This isn't the beginnings of an army. And I don't think there's anything in here that I look at and think, do you know what? I don't want that. It's just junk. The fact that they provide all of these ancillary pieces, which you're often missing from star sets, you know, tank commanders, commander bases, vehicle crew, 
decals. They're all in there and a lot of people don't use them. It's often an area which is skimped on and they're all in this set. I hope you found this review useful and thank you for watching. If like us you enjoy Battlefront's games, Flames of War and Team Yankee, one of the best ways you can support the channel is to buy some of their crap from us. Check out our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk, all profits, which are quite small, go towards supporting the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.